Pitchy Clark is here with us. You like this music? This gets you sad on Monday? <laughs> That's stiff little fingers. You asked for it. <laughs> Freddie delivers. I didn't know how we got it so fast. We're paying That's attention. amazing. We're paying attention. Wow. Uh, obviously, we're paying attention to the uh, liberal uh, campaign. <laughs> Busy times. We had John Horgan, NDP leader, on the show on Friday. The invite was put out to Andrew Weaver from the Green Party. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to join us, but you are here. And the numbers for advanced voter turnout huge just under 615,000 came out over yeah. the, the six days uh, what do you think of this and how this will uh, fare when we look at BC election day tomorrow well I think it's a good sign it means that lots of people are turning out to vote which is what we want to happen I mean you can't have a say in democracy if you don't vote and you know elections shape the future for our kids so I think it's really important people get out. Some people may say, hey, with this advanced uh, number being so high, that this could indicate an appetite for change. And I asked uh, John Horgan the same question. What if we are in a position where we could have the first minority government in over six decades? How will you work with John Horgan and Andrew Weaver to ensure that BC is served in the best way possible? I will work with whoever voters ask me to work with. So this is up to people of British Columbia. They'll decide what they want to do. And, you know, I can work with anybody. I, you know, so I'm up for whatever job people give me. It's very, very close. So people should get out and vote. I think in terms of the advanced polls, remember, though, we don't really have a voting day anymore. We kind of have a voting week. So we've had more advanced polls than we ever have. That's partly, you know, that's really because we want to make sure more people get an opportunity to vote. Because you're thinking, you know, it's like voting's Tuesday. Okay, you get up in the morning, you get your kids to school, you go to work, you get home, you get your kids homework and backpack unpacked and dinner and all that. And then you got to go vote, right? It's a, but I mean, there's not a lot of time in the day for a lot of people to vote on a Tuesday. Well, people are coming out, and I, I'm very curious to see, looking at the polls, seeing how close it is. One of the things you've said on this campaign uh, talks about campaigns itself, saying they are a true test of character as well as the test of policy. When you look at your campaign in 2017, what have you learned about your own character from going through this? Well, I've learned, you know, I love, well, I love people. So for me, campaigning is great because I get a chance to talk to people get a lot of hugs which is sort of nice right I like that but just kind of a chance to connect and go I get to travel I've traveled to Melbourne and back pretty much 12,000 miles or something 12,000 kilometers just to you know in every corner of the province and you know the thing you realize about BC every part of the province is completely unique and I have loved that part of it so if, if you look at this campaign and you get the chance to connect, and obviously we see the hashtag I am Linda, there's different types of connections happening. Is there anything you would do differently if you had the chance to do the campaign over again? Oh, I don't know. I'm not really thinking about regrets at the moment. I'm thinking about today and tomorrow and how I'm going to work as hard as I can. Because here's the thing, Riaz, I've got my job is to make sure people know what I believe in, what I stand for, what I would like to do. Because if people want to make an informed vote, they really need every leader to just be honest and straight up about what they believe in. And then they can make a choice about who they want to vote for. But democracy depends on people having the information. And that, that is an excellent point because when we've talked about the political run over the past month, a lot of people, and the question came up in the radio debate here in this building of trust. And when they say, we look at the Liberal Party, there's been questions about salary top-ups, uh, donor contributions, even accusations to the opposition hacking into your party's website. If the question comes up saying, can I trust Christy Clark, why can they trust you and looking at leading this province? Uh, well, I would say, because last time when I ran, first time as Premier, I, I said, I want to create jobs, because a job is the single most important thing in your life if you want to look after the people that you love. And so since I became Premier, we have led the country in job creation. We have 90% of the new jobs created have been full-time, 237,000 new jobs, lowest unemployment in the country. We haven't done this well since before I was born, in 1961. So. I was a promise I made. We worked really hard on it for four years. Have not been perfect. I completely, 100% accept that. But we've done the things that I think make a really big difference for people. And there's, you know, you've got the people that you love in your life. That is the most important thing. The second most important thing is having a job. Because if you don't have a job, how do you look after them? Well, jobs are a big factor, and you speak to the projects that you are backing this time around that will create jobs in our province. When we also look, we've heard from people about affordability. We have a child poverty rate that is above the national average uh, here in Canada, here in BC. But if we look at the possibility of you getting a new term here in 2017, what's your first defining action to counter the housing affordability issue here in this province? Well, we're going to continue. We're going to start working with the cities to make sure that we add supply because we need more housing. 
Here's part of the problem. I mean, we've introduced the 15% foreign tax, luxury tax on homes over $2 million, reduced the property purchase tax by $13,000, a loan for people, so 42,000 people to get a $37,000 no interest, no payment loan to put together your first down payment. Next thing is we've got to get more housing on the market because you know how it is. We all have, we all know people who've gone in to get their first condo. They're sitting there with like 150 other people and then the price just keeps going up and up and up as the bids get hot. Let's make sure there's more housing out there. So that's the first thing that we need to do, I would argue. But the other thing I would say is nothing makes life less affordable than being unemployed or working on minimum wage. Let's create more jobs for people. Let's keep taxes low. And that makes keep, you know, creates an opportunity for people to be able to afford a home in the first place. Well, it's one of the hottest issues this time around for the 2017 campaign. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, Rios, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Enjoy your 100 stops you need to do today to get it done. And tomorrow is Election Day here in the province. We'll be talking more about it throughout the show. We'll take a quick break. Watch this up on the other side. Thanks so much. You are so you do.